This is my unboxing for book of the month for March 2016. This is a book subscription. It's $16.99 a month, but if you do a three or 12 month subscription, you're gonna save a lot more. Plus you can try the subscription for only $5 for your first month. So those details will be down below. There's also a 30% off a three month subscription, plus you get a free tote bag. So again, you're gonna save more with a three month subscription. So definitely consider that longer subscription um, if you're really interested. This only ships to the United States. And I was sent all the selections. So you're only gonna get one book a month unless you pay to add on additional books. But, and they packaged it very similar that they packaged the single books. So they wrapped it in plastic with a larger cardboard piece on the bottom so the edges of your books don't get dinged up. Each book is selected by a different judge. They have one guest judge every month and you're gonna get a little bookmark with a little quote from that judge with each book. So open this up and see what the selections are this month. All right, so I'm just gonna go through each one. And I did receive the bookmark for each book. A little hard to read. This is easily one of those read in one sitting books, but I encourage you to take it slower and savor um, Button's expert depiction of intoxicating young friendship. So, this is Marlena. Everything about 15 year old Cat's New Town in rural Michigan is lonely and off kilter until she meets her neighbor, the manic, beautiful, pill popping Marlena. Cat is quickly drawn into Marlena's orbit as she catalogs a teeny of first, first drink, first cigarette, first kiss, first pill. Marlena's habits harden and calcify. Within a year, Marlena is dead, drowned in six inches of icy water in the woods nearby. Now, decades later, when a ghost from that pivotal year surfaces unexpectedly, Kat must try again to move on, even as the memory of Marlena calls her back. Told in a hauntingly, haunting dialogue between past and present, Marlena is an unforgettable story of the friendship that shapes us beyond reason and the ways it might be possible to pull oneself back from the brink. Next book is Exit West. And it says, um, Hammond may have launched a new subgenre of fiction with this new novel, The Migrant Love Story. This follow, this, um, his follow up to How to Get Filthy Rich in Rising Asia is bold, timely, and gorgeously written. Turn off M M M MSNBC and settle in. In a country teetering on the brink of civil war, two young people meet. Sensual, fiercely independent Nadia and gentle restrained Saeed. They embark on a furtive love affair and soon are cloistered in a premature intimacy by the unrest rolling of their city. When it explodes, turning familiar streets into a patchwork of checkpoints and bomb blasts, they begin to hear whispers about doors, doors that can whisk people away, far away, um, perilously, perilously, and for a price. As violent es violence escalates, Nadia and Saeed, Saeed decide that they no longer have a choice. Leaving their homeland and their old lives behind, they find a door and slip through. Exit West follows these remarkable characters as they merge on onto an alien and unforeseen future, struggling to hold on to each other, to their past, to the very sense of who they are. Profoundly intimate and powerfully inventive, it tells an unforgettable story of love, loyalty, and courage that is both completely of our time and for all time. Then, Dead Letters. So, Kate's debut uh, suspense thriller is a wonderfully clever, emotionally resonant story of a young woman's uh, scavenger hunt to figure out if her dead twin is, in fact, alive. It's like a book I would probably pick to read. Ava Antipova has her reasons for running away. A, a failing family vineyard, a romantic betrayal, a... a Mercurial sister, an absent father, a mother slipping into dementia. In Paris, Ava renounces her terrible practical under, um, undergraduate degree, acquires a French boyfriend and a taste for much better wine, and raises her past. Two years later, she must return to upstate New York. Her twin sister, Zelda, is dead. Even in a family of alcoholics, Zelda was the wild one, notorious for her mind games and destructive behavior. Stunk, stuck tending the vineyard and the girl's increasingly unstable mother, Zelda was allegedly burned alive when she passed out in the barn with a lit cigarette. 
But Ava finds the official explanation a little too neat, a little too Zelda. Then she receives a cryptic message from her sister. Just as Ava suspected, Zelda's playing one of her games. In fact, she's outdone herself, leaving a series of clues about her disappearance. With the police stuck on a red herring, Ava follows the trail laid just for her, thinking like her sister, keeping her secrets, immersing herself in Zelda's drama and outlandish circle of friends and lovers. Along the way, Zelda forces her twin to confront their twisted history and the boy who broke Ava's heart. But why? Is Zelda crying to punish Ava for leaving or teach her a lesson? Or is she simply trying to write her own ending? Very cool. Might be Ava. But I know someone that spells it A-V-A and then uses the pronunciation Ava, so. However you pronounce it. But it's really good. I really prefer like mystery novels myself, so. Next book is All Grown Up. A book for women who are warned, um, but persist. Not unscathing, but undeterred. Who's Andrea Byrne? When her therapist asks a question, Andrea knows the right things to say. She's a designer, a friend, a daughter, a sister. But what she leaves unsaid, she's alone, a drinker, a former artist, a shrieker in bed, captain of the sinking ship that is her flesh and feels the most true. Everyone around her seems to have an entirely different idea of what it means to be an adult. Her best friend, Indigo, is getting married. Her brother, who miraculously seems unscathed by their shared tumultuous childhood, and her sister-in-law is having um, a hope for baby. And her friend, Matthew, continues to wholly devote himself to making dark paintings at the cost of being flat broke. But when Andrea's niece finally arrives, born with a heartbreaking ailment, the Byrne family is forced to re-examine what really matters. Will this drive them together or tear them apart? Told in a gut-wrenching, honest, mordantly comic vignettes, All Grown Up is a breathtaking display of Jamie Attenberg's power as a storyteller. A whip-smart examination of, woman, of one woman's life lived entirely on her own terms. The last book is The Stranger in the Woods, an ex the extraordinary story of the last true hermit. As a Maine native, I can assure you that the winters here are brutal, so I absolutely had to know how someone could spend 27 winters alone in the Maine woods. It seemed impossible. The Stranger in the Woods is my new favorite work of nonfiction, and I hope you love it as well. Neat. Many people dream of escaping modern life, but most will never act on it. Told in a riveting narrative, this remarkable st true story of a man who lived alone in the woods of Maine for 27 years made this dream a reality. In 1986, a shy, intelligent 20-year-old named Christopher Knight left his home in Massachusetts, drove to Maine, and disappeared into the forest. He would not have have a conversation with another human being until nearly three decades later when he was arrested for stealing food. Living in a tent, even though brutal... Even through brutal winters, he is survived by his wits and courage, developing ingenious ways to store edibles and water and to avoid freezing to death. He broke into near to nearby cottages for food, clothing, reading material, and other provisions, taking only what he needed but ter terrifying a community never able to solve the mysterious burglaries. Based on extensive interviews with Knight himself, this is a vividly detailed account of his secluded life. Why did he leave? What did he learn? And as well as the challenges that he has faced since returning to the world. It's a gripping story of survival that asks fundamental questions about solitude, community, and what makes a good life as well as a deeply moving portrait of a man who is determined to live his own way and succeed. That's fascinating. This will definitely be the first book I read. Um, like I said, normally I would pick like a mystery thriller. Um, and a Dead Letter would probably be my first pick otherwise, but this looks really fascinating. So those are the five selections for March. So if one of them caught your eye and you want to try it out, you can get it for five bucks. Um, so even when you compare that to Amazon prices, it's a really good deal. And Book of the Month also features kind of exclusive previews to books. Um, so and they, there's been some pretty popular books released. So it's a really neat subscription. And the nice thing is if you don't like any selections one month, you can skip. So it's really great. You can, you know, pick the book you like or skip, cancel anytime from your account. If you want to try it out, details are below for those deals. Again, 30% off a three month subscription or try your first box for five bucks. So I will have a full written review. Thanks for watching and have a great day.